Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wolke, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video because it was finally announced, literally at the last possible time because it is Thanksgiving as the time you're hearing this video. The Thanksgiving banner is here, yay! So, I asked a whole bunch. I asked a whole bunch. Sorry, that was my cat. My cat scared the shit out of me because he was opening a door of some kind. Anyway, uh, I asked back when I was guessing what units would be on it if what guesses would they, would they man that cat completely screwed me up basically i made people say what would your guess be on this banner if you got any of them right feel free to tell me i already know someone got like two of them right with uh caster nero and bb summer but let's go over the units real quick this is going to be short and sweet because all these guys are fan favorites of some kind so the people who know who are going to be summoning for them are going to be summoning for them so let's go We'll start here. So yeah, this is the Thanksgiving banner. It's here from the 24th till the 4th of December, which is just enough time. I think that's the end of something else that's going to be coming up. Uh, the units on it are going to be Benny Enma for Saber. For Lancer, it's going to be Erish Goggle. For Caster, it's going to be Miro. For Assassin, it's Asan. And for BB, it is going to is the extra. It's BB Summer, who is Moon Cancer. And this is the way the schedule is going to be looking. This is important to remember because uh, you have to remember how the banner looks like. I'll explain why. But it's going to start with Benny Enma, Benny Enma, then it's going to go Benny Enma, Erish Goggle, then it's Erish Goggle by yourself, Erish Goggle with Nero, and then Nero, Nero with King Asan, King Asan, King Asan and BB, BB, and then BB for the end of it. So why is this important to remember is because if you're someone who is looking to pity and this only applies to someone who pities if you're no someone who can never reach pity then ignore what I'm about to say but if you want to pity any of these units then you have to remember that th your points on it reset after so if you go for Benny Enma and you get up to 290 summons and then you wait a day and then the next banner comes up you reset back and that's not good. The other thing about this banner, which is important to know, if you pull any of these featured dudes, you cannot get pity on anything else. So you have to really think carefully if you are someone who is going for pity to go for it. If you're not someone, then I wish you the best of luck if you do end up summoning on here. Best of luck to you. So first day, of course, is going to be Benny Emma, which we'll start by looking at her here. She is a single target art saber and her main skills are wouldn't it have been amazing if i remembered uh, she's one quick two arts two buster first skill is eye of the mind false a grant self evasion increase on crit damage because these are all five stars i'm gonna go for these very quickly star basket big ex reduce all enemies defense for three turns reduce their critical attack chance for three turns seals their np for one turn recovers their hp by 1000 uh Star Basket Small EX increases party attack for 3 turns, increases party buff removal resistance for 1 turn, charges party ga NP gauge, recovers party HP by 1000, and recovers all enemies HP as well by 1000. And the NP up is 20%, so that's important because a lot of NP <laughs> increased stuff is important to take note of. Passive skills are Magic Resistance A, Independent Action A, Presence Concealment A, and Creation B, which is an increase to own arts performance. And for Trilloquism EX, which grants self the skill to seal debuff immunity. Uh, third skill, Anti-Assassin Attack Damage Aptitude increases on attack against assassins. And her Noble Phantasm is a 5-hit single target arts, deals 1 damage to 1 enemy, deals 900% damage at MP level 1, and at MP level 5 it's 1500. And she has the effect which is increases own damage against enemies with the chaotic alignment for one turn and the evil alignment and this is only for the overcharge and it's 40 percent and 40 percent so if you're fighting someone who's chaotic evil she will completely screw them up mess them up ruin their day so that's benny enma um i think there's a, some people who don't like the way benny enma kind of does and i can understand it because she's kind of like a support unit that is single target but she's not really about big damage she's kind of about supporting and doing some other stuff and maybe having a little bit more of like it's a very different kind of playstyle, but I really like Benny Enma. I've always have, especially against chaotic, <laughs> a chaotic evil lancers, which there are a couple of them. He completely destroys them. Uh, I've always been a fan of hers, so it's unfortunate I'm not going to be able to summon her. But it's definitely a unit that I think is worth kind of having and messing around with. So 
There's my opinion on Benny Enma, and we'll move on to the next one, which would be Irish Goggle. I can't believe I pulled up BB when she's dead last on this one. Mm, she should be somewhere around here. She's also a single... Is she AoE or single target? I can't remember. I remember she summons a deer, a King of Song, and other people in her Noble Phantasm, but I can't actually remember what she does, because it's been so long since she's been mentioned in anything. <laughs> but Irish Goggle. Two quicks, one arts, two buster. First skill, the secret great crown and grant self invincibility for one turn, grants the self self debuff immunity for one turn, chance to grant itself insta kill immunity for one turn, chance to increase own buff removal resistance by 100% for one turn. Second skill is a manic burst cage, a plus, increase on buster performance for one turn and charges on NP gauge. The one turn increase adds obviously 50% and 50% NP. Uh, Blessings of Kerr EX. Grants party the Blessing of Kerr buff for three turns, unstackable. Blessing of Kerr enables the additional effects from Erish Goggle's NP, increases party's defense for three turns, increase party's NP generation for three turns, and increase max HP for three turns, and the NP rate up is 30%, the defense is 20%. And her passive skills are Magic Resistance D, Territory Creation A+, and Goddess Essence B, increase on damage by 225, increase on debuff resistance by 22.5%. Uh, her third skill of a pens is an anti-assassin attack damage aptitude, increased damage against uh, assassins. And her noble phantasm, which eventually gets a strengthening, I believe. No, yes, it's a strengthening. Is a five hit buster, deals damage to all enemies, deals 150% extra damage to enemies with the earth attribute, which is not something she had previously. Nope. Increases the attack of all allies with the Blessing of Kerr buff by 20% for 3 turns. Increases their crit attack chance resistance by 20% for 3 turns. Grants them instant kill immunity for 3 turns. And the NP damage is at level 1, 400%, and at level 5, it's 600%. And then she also increases her own buster performance for 1 turn, which is only 10% at charge level 1 and 50% if you get it to charge level 5. So yeah. Erish Coggle. Um, she is an AoE buster, and I believe her NP gauge is at a six turn cooldown, so it's totally possible for you to kind of farm around with her for buster when we have the new buster supports when she comes in. But besides that, I think she's kind of neat. I, but the main reason I think she's kind of neat is because this chance to grant Ensign's self kill and immunity. Um, this is a very niche ability right here. But to be 100% real with you, there is some fights, and it's specifically the one where I'm thinking back to King Asan, where the NA version of the game got a fixed version of the King Asan Nero Fest fight, where he, he no longer targeted the first unit, he now targeted any random unit, and he had a high insta kill. And in that specific instance, granting insta kill immunity would have been extremely useful. And I think eventually he is going to be coming back, so something to kind of keep in mind. So I do think that she ends up working out in two different ways, in two way, different ways to use her, which is that she can buster farm when the time comes, and that she can also uh, help with that specific niche that she has right here with her NP, which is not a lot of units can kind of deal with. There's not a lot of dudes that can help you with that fight, but that ability can definitely help you in the, that instance. So it's another unit that I think is good. If you're someone who uses Erish more, I would be very interested to hear what you feel about her skills. Because at the time, Erish was amazing. Broken, even. I think by today's standards, she's a little bit more on the just good side. And the reason is, is this 50% buster up. It's not enough. For only a singular turn, when others like Arjuna Alter are going full crazy, and then her overcharge is only 10%. So I don't know if she needs a buff. She doesn't really scream that she needs a buff, but if you're someone who's more adept at using Arish, feel free to tell me, but I think she's pretty solid as she is right now. But this is only what it can base on paper, because again, she's such a rare unit, and I did try for her, but I failed so amazingly that I've never tried again. It was a really bad experience, so... There you go with Arish. Next, we have the next unit on here, which is Nero Caster. Aster Nero, where are you, Summer Nero? The only summer unit for Summer 2 that I'm missing in a really mean way. Nero, one quick, two arts, two buster. First skill, increase his own NP gauge. If, it, if own HP is less than 50%, increase MP generation rate for three turns. 50%, 50%. 
Second skill, 7 crowns C, increase on attack for 3 turns, increase on defense for 3 turns. Ignore own defense class disadvantage against Rider, Berserker, and Alter Ego for 3 turns. Takes 1% damage, takes 1x damage from them. This ability is still stupid. I think she continues to be the only unit that has this ability. Uh, the attack increase and defense increase is 30%. Third skill, Undying Magus A. Grants one ally gut status for one time, three turns. Increase their attack for three turns. 50% attack. God damn, I had no idea they increased the attack by that much. Passive skills, those writing B. Territory creation A+. Plus, and item construction odd, EX. Her third append skill is a bonus against ruler enemies. And her rank A, Noble Phantasm, which is a five hit buster, is an increase in invincibility for one turn. Deals damage to all enemies. NP at level 1 is 300% damage, at level 5 it's 500%, increase on NP damage for one turn, um, charge is at 100, at 100% is 20% damage up, and 500% is 60%, and I'll say right now, um, if it was not for the fact that she was a caster, <laughs> I think she'd probably be one of the most crazy broken, the one thing that's holding her back is the well two things are holding her back is that she's a caster so that automatically makes it so she deals less damage um which is really bad for if you're a buster uh especially because buster has so many options it wouldn't have mattered if she was arts or quick because arts and quick don't necessarily care as much as compared to buster which buster only cares really about damage and they also have a bunch of units that can also deal more damage and then it goes into another thing but I also think that this ability here would they should probably remove that HP restriction but other than that I think she has an insanely good like hit still for how old she is like giving you an ally guts for one time is nice three turns it only revives with one but it's even crazier that she gives them 50% attack for that and then this ability here which just ignores the defense class disadvantage against riders berserkers and alter egos is just dumb so dumb that she has this. I think she's still. I think, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think anyone else has an ability like this. Mainly because they could only give it to a caster. <laughs> because if any other unit have it, you'd probably run into some issues. But I think she's still very good and solid. So if you're someone who's a big fan of Nero, and it still kills me deep down inside that I was never able to get this unit, still kind of kills me. Not enough to maybe do a summon, but it does kill me. Uh, I do think she's kind of worth owning. I think every single one of these dudes is worth having. This is an extremely stacked banner. But let's move on. Uh, the last one before we can talk about the BB here at the end is King Asan. This is going to be very easy. He's the old man of the mountains. Three buster, quick arts. His first skill after he gets in the uh, strengthening is Abyss of Death EX. Grant self gut status for one time five turns. Grant self Abyss of Death buff for five turns. Abyss of Death if guts status is present. Increase on buster performance for five turns. Grant self on guts activated buff for one time five turns. When gut status is activated, 500% chance to remove own Abyss of Death buff. Charges own NP gauge by 20%. Increases own buster performance for by 50% for one turn. Revives with 5,000 HP and 30% buster is given to him as well. Second skill, Protection of Faith, A++. Plus, increase own debuff resistance for three turns, recovers own HP, increases own defense for one turn, and increases own attack for three turns. Um, Evening Bell EX reduces all enemies' instant kill resistance by for three turns, increases own buster performance for one turn, 50% buster, and death resistance up is 100%. Passive skill is... Yeah, the death resistance is lowered by 100%. Passive skill, magic resistance B, increases on debuff resistance for 17.5%. Uh, presence concealment A, independent action B, and out of the boundaries, which grants him uh, self-instant kill immunity. You can't insta-kill him. Increases on charge debuff resistance by 100%. And grants self on attack activated debuff, you have a 5% chance of just instant-killing dudes with normal attacks. Third skill is anti-saber attack damage aptitude, and his rank C. <laughs> it's really hilarious that this ability is rank C. Azrael is the angel that announces death, is a one hit, 100% just pure damage on that one hit, deals damage to one enemy. NP is at level 1, 600% damage, and is 1000 by level 5, and there's a chance to insta-kill them. It's a 100% one, chance of killing them at charge level 1. And all the way to five, it's um, 
200% if you can get him that high. Um, so yeah, King Hassan is probably, he was for the longest time the best single target um, assassin. I think that would probably go to Kama nowadays just because Kama does so much more. But in terms of Buster and Assassins, I don't think he's ever really been replaced. Let me see, he's definitely aged a little bit. I can tell you that much for free. And that's only because of how crazy Power Crep has gone. But when I think of single target Assassins, I still think of him for the most part. Uh, let me see, Li Xuan, I'm pretty sure he is Arts, so he doesn't count. I don't know enough about a lot of these other guys to really make a statement on it. So yeah, in terms of Buster dudes, I still think he's the best in terms of Buster. Um, he's very simple in what he does, and what he does is that he wants to kill you. There's really nothing more than that. Uh, you can definitely tell which one of these skills, <laughs> the other two skills are maybe a little bit really old, and you can tell that his Noble Phantasm definitely needs a buff of some kind. Um, but that said, for being an assassin, which also, similar to Caster, suffers from doing less damage, it's crazy how much damage this man can actually do. And he's also just a really fun unit to use in general. I think there is something to be said about, like, how fun a unit is, and this DI is definitely cool. I mean, there's a reason for that, you know. Um, I think he probably falls in the similar tier of Merlin for me, where it's like, you could technically buff him. But they're already so good, you should probably focus it on, on other dudes, so... But whatever, Merlin at this point has been... No, he hasn't been buffed yet. They buffed his... No, they didn't buff him at all. Never mind. If they're gonna start buffing anyone, they should buff more King of Song <laughs> than Merlin. I think Merlin's still fine, but at this point I'm rambling. I think King of Song's fucking awesome. There's no way to look at him and not just go like, this guy's rad as fuck. So that's all I have to say. He hit big. He assassinated. He got a big-ass sword, and he also has a big-ass shield in Stage 3. What more do you need? And final unit, BB Summer. Uh, is BB Summer. Let's move on. Just kidding. First skill, set up self-modification of Love EX. This is after it gets strengthened. Increases his own crit damage for 3 turns. Increases his own crit star absorption for 3 turns. Increases his own attack for 3 turns. Grant self on attack activated buff for 3 turns. Gains 20 crit stars when attack <coughs> attacking with an extra attack. Second skill, Arusa Porse Pokia Golden Pig Grail. Uh, charges on MP gauge, recovers on HP, increases his own buster performance for three turns, increases his own NP damage for three turns, and grants self evasion for one attack three turns. It's a 50% increase, but I will say that the cooldown is currently at seven, so not ideal for actually farming stuff around. <laughs> Something to keep in mind. Third skill, Faceless Mooney X, locks the set deal. Dealt command cards for three turns. Command cards do not get reshuffled when the skill is activated. The effect is removed if a party member is defeated or someone uses an order charge of some kind. Gain crit stars every turn for three turns. The star regen is at 10. Her passive skills are territory creation A, the one who swallows the earth EX, existence outside of the domain B, goddess essence A, and then we have for her third skill for a pens, it is anti foreigner, which is funny. And our Noble Phantasm is the Cursed Cutting Praetor, or CCC. Three hits, deals damage to all enemies, reduces the MP gauge by one. 300% uh, damage at level one, and then five at level five, 500% at level five. And then chance to further reduce your MP gauge is the overcharge effect, a 10% drain chance at charge level one. If you get it all the way to charge level uh, five, it is 50%, so. I really like Summer BB. I think she's a really fun unit, especially with this ability here. You can do a lot of dumb stuff. The buff that she eventually gets also helps with this, because if you lock in BB's skills, um, then what basically happens is that for three turns, you're just going to get constant 20 crit stars, and you're just going to, depending on how well you've made with the five, um, the, with, depending on which five of the BB cards you pick, like if you pick uh, Buster, Buster Arts, which is probably what you want the most, um, you're going to be getting a lot of crit stars to allow you to keep just kind of cycling over and over again for three turns, which is really cool. I think it's really cool to have that ability. And then if you consider the fact that you're locking everything down, then you also have buster supports on the side here to help a little bit with this. The biggest bummer on this is that this cooldown at seven is just barely not enough for what you need unless you're bringing in a... Uh, Mystic Code to kind of lower it down by one again, so something to kind of keep in mind for that. 
Uh, but yeah, I really like using Faceless Moony X. I love this BB. I love summoning. <laughs> I love that I summon for her. I love every single Ascension stage she has, even the weird white one that she got. It's not weird. It's more than just like, it just looks wrong. Like compared to this, and then you compare it to this, just something doesn't feel right. But I'm digressing. I think she's cool. Definitely worth kind of going for. And I think they did a really good job on making a banner that is the ultimate bait banner for Thanksgiving. <laughs> and going into Black Friday. Should you summon on this? Uh, listen, I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. I've told you what these units do, and to be honest, I think most people have made up their minds by the time I've said anything. Uh, so I'm just gonna wish you the best of luck if you're summoning. Um, I think these units are all cool, and there's not one of them where I feel like they're not unusable in a massive way. I would tell you if there was any that I felt was actually irredeemable in some kind of way. I said it for Ushi, which is the 4 star, which kills me every time I say it just because I love Ushi so much that it makes me sad that her Assassin Summer version is just so bad. Um, it needs a lot of buffs still, but yeah, this is a, this is definitely a big ass bait banner for Thanksgiving. We were expecting it. Um, it looked like it wasn't going to happen, and then at the last second they said, hey, screw it, we'll just literally announce it on the night before Thanksgiving for a lot of Americans. So good luck with that. Um, if you're summoning again, good luck. If you're not, Abuki's around the corner. And then we got Vitra coming for December. And then, of course, Muramasa, which is where I assume most people are kind of waiting and summoning for. And are going to be actually spending most of their stuff. So, oh well, that's it for today's video, everyone. I'm going to go back to playing Pokemon. I wish you guys the best of luck. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.